bet you played Dungeons and Dragons in high school. Didn't I, you? I've never played it actually. That's a lie. That um, is a bald face. I didn't lie. even know it was what it was until I watched Stranger Things. Oh, but I have never <clears> played it in my life. I mean, not. I'm not saying I wouldn't play it. <laughs> I'm not saying I, I wouldn't. I don't. Even, I really don't even know what that is. Yeah, well, you haven't wow. seen Stranger Things, see? That's the problem. It and and that's a problem on more than one level. Game. You need to watch Stranger Things. Stranger Things is actually a time good. to watch. I, I, we watched the last winter. Doug lives yeah. Stranger oh, Things. Did you watch the whole thing? <laughs> that's his life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his life is strange. Yeah, no, we we watched it last winter. And uh, we binged it. It was like fall time or whatever. We binged a bunch. And... Uh, it was really probably the last thing that we binged. I haven't like said that I like, I can't say that we have like sat down and watched anything else like very thoroughly. So, uh, so mm-hmm. anyway, but it was good. It was good. Yeah. How was it's your guys' watch Thanksgiving? Again. Like I'd watch it over. <laughs> we uh, <clears throat> had a little curveball thrown. Heather went uh, Black Friday shopping early Friday morning. And she returned back home with a stomach bug. And uh, so I locked her locked her in the room and said, stay as far away from us as possible. And uh, <laughs> me and the kids just kind of hung out all weekend. But, oh, my, I, I had a, my highlight of, of my dad time. Doug, you'll appreciate this. So uh, Charlie May, my three-year-old, she's the middle child. Uh, we I got tired of cartoons at midday on Saturday. I was like no more cartoons like this is enough and uh so i turned on meat eater and canon loves meat eater and this must have been charlie must not remember when we used to watch it a lot and uh so they they shoot an elk and she immediately loses her mind like crying she's like why did they do that oh my gosh (laughs) and i'm like girl i know you've watched this before like (laughs) we we used to watch this all the time and uh I had to, you know, I started to explain to her the process of like, you know, this is how we get meat. Like they're going to eat this. So it's it's going to feed their families. I said, don't you like steak? And she's like, yeah. And I was like, well, this is where it comes from. Like, this is how we get it. And uh, so she still doesn't really understand. She watches the whole like, you know, uh, processing of it. And then they cook it at the end. That's like one of my favorite things about meat eaters. They, they take yeah. you from beginning to end. And uh, so she, she watches them cut it up and then go right to cooking it and then she was like oh okay that's where steak comes from and <laughs> they like it. clicked for yeah and then so 20 <laughs> minutes later she has a wrapping paper tube and she's got it like a long gun and she, she pretends to shoot cannon <laughs> and so he falls over like he's a deer <laughs> and then she goes over and she takes her hand and she like starts cutting him open <laughs> and then <laughs> when she's done cutting him open she grabs him by the ankles and she drags him back to camp and i was cracking <laughs> up the whole time because <laughs> she went from like being totally mortified to wanting to like reenact every step of it uh, it was a little proud dad moment for sure but it was uh, that's hilarious definitely Girl the, loves the highlight steak. of of dad time yeah oh man she tears it up she's she like oh Oh, that is, I get that is... it now. Let's go kill all the elves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It it took her a second, but like once she like realized, then she was she's good with it. She's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm I'm down that's for awesome. killing elk if we get to eat them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's oh, yeah. so awesome. That's so How about cool. The, uh, Our Thanksgiving the... was it was pretty mild. We didn't have any travel or anything like that. We just stayed uh, we just stayed around here, and uh, we went down to Grandma and Papa's house and hung out down there for the afternoon. Didn't really do just a whole lot, but I mean, it, it was. It, I w- I'd like to say that my children got some sort of life changing education like Paul's, but they didn't really. I mean, maybe how much food dad can eat uh, at Thanksgiving. Other than that, that was about the extent of their uh, education. So. We just we just hung out and had a pretty quiet weekend, which was outstanding. As much needed, as crazy as life has been here lately, and and going to be for the next thirty four years or something. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, it was uh, it was good. We just we just rested and and relaxed and. Um, yeah, it was awesome when working. I've been getting in this rhythm, man. Like, and the rhythm is so helpful for me. I love being home because I can get in this routine, and. Man, I I get up at like 
four thirty every morning and I've been getting like good sleep and rested. And so it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Like I get up at the exact same time. And the first thing I do is come to my office and like check notifications. If I have any programming to do, do some programming, but like on the weekend, I don't really have any of that to do. So I was able to just like watch lectures. And anyway, my Thanksgiving was good because it was like normal and I was in a routine and was able to mm-hmm. kind of stay on the, on the task. And so it's been, it's been good. I'm excited for another week and a half of routine before we go to the place where routine goes to die. In days. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have a routine. What about you, there. Dougie? What did you do Save for Thanksgiving? Uh, we, I, I was solo for most of it. Al had to work, which is the joys of having a spouse that works in healthcare. They got to work holidays. Got to, got to have mm-hmm. nurses on the holidays. So she was working, um, her family lives here now or her sister and brother-in-law and, and niece and nephew. So they came over. Her mom's in town. Oh, I she didn't know that. Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they live here now. And so we've been, uh, we had them over. Richie, Paige, and Forrest came over too. So we did, we don't do turkey at our house. We do prime rib. So we did prime rib and uh, mm-hmm. you know, all, all the sides and stuff. And Al's actually doing whole 30. She's just finishing it up. So we did everything. Whole thirty wise, so everything was really, really mm. good. It was actually awesome. There's a couple of things in there that I'm actually going to add as like a staple to my weekly meal. They made like this turkey hash with sweet potatoes and like spinach and and stuff like that in there. It was so damn good, um, so good. It was like a perfect mix of carbs, protein, micronutrients. It was awesome. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty chill, man. Thank chill. Uh, I did finish <clears throat> cutting firewood, which is a fucking miracle <laughs> <laughs> until another so, tree falls down. It was good. Yeah. Until <laughs> yeah, another tree falls yeah. Down. Next week. No, but we, uh, that felt good to get all that knocked out. And then, um, yeah, like you guys are saying, we're getting ready for NFR. We got some big things coming up. We will be podcasting live there. I know. I think we said there was talks of that last time, but we will officially be doing that. The, Five days for sure that we are going to be podcasting. We'll be at Resorts World. We'll be back towards the BFO tent if anybody is in town. And it'll be every day that the BFO is. So I believe it's the first weekend and then the last three mm-hmm. days of the, the rodeo. Last three days. Yeah. Um, yeah. So five total days we'll be podcasting. I believe it's at 1030 a.m. I'm not 100% on that yet. So I'm going to say anywhere between that 930 and 1030 mark will be live having guests on the show lots of we have a couple bullfighters on can't wait to talk with them a couple guys that we've been training working with um, that are there competing for the belt baby for the bfo title so it'll be it'll be awesome but we'd love to see anybody there come come check it out come say hi find us i know you know logan was saying that it's gonna be hard to have a routine it definitely is but i know at least for the first five days we do really good about staying on the routine being in the gym yeah. every morning so if you are staying at Resorts World and do work out, which I'm assuming if you listen to this, you probably work out, come come get a lift in. We'll be there. We'll be at the gym. We'll be posting where we're at. Um, Logan will be wanting us to be there at 530. I'll probably say 7. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not going to be there at 530. I promise you that. That'll I'll be, I'll be up much later there. So the sleep schedule. Plus, it's like, what is Vegas, two hours behind Central? Hours, so Or is yeah. it? Well, the, yeah, yeah, so the, probably the first two days you'll wake up at 2.30 a.m. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I will be, uh, I'll be, I'll be wrecked for the first few days. So seven a.m. workouts sound just, just dandy to me. That's yeah. totally fine. Uh, I'm actually real beginning. quick. Did you guys, did you guys listen to the? Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Doug. Go oh, ahead. I was gonna say, did you guys listen to that song I sent you the other day? Yeah. Yes. This is. This uh, is I random. listened to. I, I listened to. A, I, I I listened to a little bit of it. I just like. I just don't really. I don't know. I just don't get into, I don't, I just don't get into them that much. So I like, listen, I listened you, to the first 30 you seconds. You sent and me like, Treaty Oak, eh. or you showed me Treaty Oak Revival the other day. And like, that's why the whole reason why I listened to the album. So they, so Treaty Oak Revival drops this new album and there's a song on there called Close Encounters. And it's a beautifully written ballad about a country boy getting abducted by aliens. 
and I thought it was the funniest song that I've listened to in a long time, <laughs> but it jams too. Like it, the melody freaking jams. And so I was like, I'm listening. I bet I've listened to it 15 times since it came out the other day. That's hilarious. Uh, that's funny. Okay. Well, it's, maybe it's I'll, definitely I'll, my I'll favorite. give it a second. I'll, yeah. I'll give it a definitely second. my favorite Southern right. rock song about being abducted no, by aliens. To, no. It might, it might, might be the only one, <laughs> but. The only one. <laughs> I don't know. Leonard Skinner probably has one somewhere. Yeah, maybe <laughs> Leonard Skinner buried probably in has the archives somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> buried in the archives. That's, oh, that's funny. Oh, that's that's I cool. I did check it out. That was a yeah. They're they they are good. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys do. I do Vegas prep starting now, like a week out. I'm gonna be trying to stay up later just to make myself do it. Otherwise, I will get there and be like grandpa, ready to go to bed mm-hmm. at eight o'clock. So. I like have to get ready. Might even have a drink or two just to make sure my system mm. doesn't go in complete shock when we get there. <laughs> Start priming the system. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be wrecked. I'm not giving up my I'm not giving up my early mornings for the next week and a half. It's when I get most of my stuff done. So I'm just gonna have to be wrecked oh, for the I'll first still, few days. I'm not gonna transition. Way. Yeah, that's good. I hope you don't transition anytime <sighs> soon, Logan. <laughs> yeah. <we don't. laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. Uh, that's funny. All right, so take it there. It's got, a, it's got a different meaning these to. days. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta be careful with that word. So, New Year's is coming up. End of the year is coming up. Working out goals are increasing as always. Everybody is starting to think about those New Year's resolutions. Um, I want to talk about like main points of of defining a fitness goal, like defining your why for working out if this is your goal is your goal is to be fitter next year by the end of next year and that is going to be your journey this next 365 days why the fuck do you want to do that you've got to make it very clear it's got to be something that means a lot of things to you to keep you going so we're going to talk about that today how to line out those goals how to make them smart goals how to build some accountability build a system of people around you that can actually help you stay accountable so hopefully this will be helpful for you guys getting these goals in place. But um, just starting it off, y'all, uh, talk about like your why is the first thing I think about. What is Why is it important to understand your why, Paul? Yeah, I think this is probably the biggest one as far as like when you're starting a fitness journey, like you've got to, everybody's motivated in January, right? Like January 1 comes around, everybody's like, this is my year. This is my year. Every, we hear it all the time. The gyms are going to be full for the first month and a half of the year. Everybody's motivated. But motivation, if you do get a gym membership and you, you can you can witness this, you can see it physically happen. Around the middle of February, towards the end of February, the gym starts to empty out at the times that it was busy, you know, the weeks leading up to that point. And so what happens there is people that motivation wears off like motivation is is a a fleeting thing so if you're relying on motivation for anything um, you're kind of fighting a losing battle and so you need to uh, understand like your why behind what you're going to do and that's what's going to carry you through out Mm -hmm. until the end it's going to carry you through the first year of your fitness journey it's going to carry you through the second year and it's going to carry you through a lifetime of of living a healthy lifestyle so you need to understand Mm -hmm. like a clear personal reason for why you're doing this and so like some examples of like a common goal in fitness is going to be like either weight loss like you know maybe it's aesthetics maybe it's it's uh, building muscle maybe you want to get stronger maybe you just want to uh, be healthy and live longer uh, maybe you're wanting to increase your performance like these are different goals that we can have and those goals are great but like we need to get to the root of why you want to get there so like you have to kind of dig deep it's a little bit uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but you need to dig mm-hmm. down deep. And, and this is going to be different for everybody, but you got, you got to kind of do some soul searching and figure out what's the real reason that I'm doing this. And like, so for my personal example, an easy one would be like, if I want to be healthy for my kids, like that could be my why mm-hmm. that's, that's, what's going to carry me through. So then on the days when it's really hard and I don't want to go to the gym, I can think about, well, if I go to the gym today, I'll be able to show up for my kids this week and next week and the weeks after and you know hopefully for a very long time so that i mean Mm -hmm. that's just like what a personal example could be for me but like i said it's going to be pretty individualized Mm -hmm. and the i like that just the 
the common, like, I just want to be there for my kids. I had a consult with a, well, a new client now, but he signed up and he's not a, not a rodeo athlete. He's actually a fishing guide. So majority of his year or the summer at least is spent sitting in a boat, uh, all day long. Mm -hmm. And then the winter time he guides a little bit of elk hunting. And so he gets in shape for the, for a couple months of the winter, hiking all over the mountains, comes back goes skiing, does all the winter things, and says, you know, he'll lose 10 to 15 pounds. He's also a young guy, about 23, um, so body is still working well. Metabolism is working well. Um, but he gets to this point where he's carrying around about 25 pounds of extra weight after fishing season, and he his one, his why is because he looks at his dad, who is in his 60s, and he's like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be mm – -hmm not able to do some of the things that I really enjoy, like going fishing, like going hunting, um, going hiking. And now he's about to be a new dad as well. He's like, dude, having this whole thing just turned that on even more for me. It was like, I've got to be there for my kid and I want to be the best version of myself. So, you know, we talk so much about the sport specific side of this, but the other side of this, the, the longevity, the well being of just living life is so important. And, um, it can be that simple, which is really important. Uh, Logan, I'm going to let you walk us through the SMART goals because this ties us right into SMART goals. And you know, the why is going to set you up for getting you started. The why is going to be something you can look back and just keep your mind to keep you going. But we got to have those SMART goals that are specific, measurable, actionable, all of the things. You're going to go through all this with us. Um, yep. But yeah, that's this is what's going to keep yeah, you it's, online. <clears throat> okay. I, completely agree and i think that most times you know you guys dozens of times you get on a consult call with somebody that's filled out a bio form and what what are you looking for out of a program and their response is well i just want to be in better shape or i want to get in good shape uh define like we have to define what that, that mean? right and yeah. that's where these smart goals come in yeah we've got a what is good shape for you and so like doug mentioned earlier the first thing is specific Hey, it hey, look, really real needs quick. to be specific. And a lot of times when it, yeah. Real quick, when you're going through this, can we just say that um, the goal, their why is because they want want to lose weight and increase their longevity of life. Can you like make it, so as you're going through this, can we just say like a specific, like the way that we could actually make that goal? Absolutely, yeah. So if they're okay. trying to, if yeah, absolutely. Their why is that they've got kids and they want their quality of life. They Man, they want to be able to just be there for their for their kids. And so the first thing they have to do is set this specific goal, right? The SMART goal is the first thing is specific. And so for a lot of times, specific and measurable can, can sometimes overlap, which is the second thing. And specifically speaking, it's not just get in better shape for my kids. Is there is there a specific uh, uh, genes that you want to fit into? Is there a specific number on the scale that you want to see is there a specific weight that you want to be able to squat or or bench press or something of that nature and the scale is a tricky thing a, a side note is that you know sometimes we get attached to numbers in our head and we say well when i get to here i'll be happy and we we so we do we we work out like crazy and we do whatever we can to get to that number and we're still not happy and so we always talk to people specifically about biofeedback and how are you sleeping and so maybe that's your specific thing is that i, I want to exercise i want to be there for my kids and my specific thing is i'm going to track my sleep right or we're going to track the the size clothes that i'm fitting on or numbers that i might be hitting in the gym as opposed to weight weight can be a valuable tool but that can be specific and it also checks the second box that's measurable and it goes the other way for people that are trying to gain weight and so that was one of my goals for a long time is that i wanted to see 200 on the scale i had a healthy understanding of my weight and the scale didn't bother me, but like whatever your specific goal is, it really needs to be measurable. So if you're trying to fit into, you know, those 34 inch waist jeans again, that's specific. It's also measurable, right? The next thing is that it needs to be achievable. So we really, this is difficult because a lot of times we, you know, we hear shoot for the shoot for the moon and you'll land among the stars. And so we think, you know, dream big and I've got to have big goals. But if you're somebody that's 100 pounds overweight and you want to be in better shape for your kids, 
number one, I commend you for taking the first step, right? If you're listening to this podcast, this is the first step in your journey. And I love that. I think that's, I, I think that's absolutely fantastic. But saying that I am going to lose 150 pounds in the next, in the next six months, while that is definitely a desirable goal, it's probably not something that's super attainable. Can you lose yeah. those hundred pounds over the course of the next one, two, three years? Absolutely you can. So let's set something that is specific. It's measurable, right? A lot of times then, then what are we going to like, what are we going to accomplish? That's, that's attainable. Don't sell yourself short either. Don't say, well, I I'm just going to lose 10 pounds this year. Like if you have more that you're trying to lose, or uh, I'm just going to get my bench press up by five pounds. Like we have to kind of see where you're at and make sure that you're setting a goal that is attainable, but that's going to stretch you a little bit. The next thing is that it needs to be relevant, right? So if you're trying to get healthy for your kids, that's your big why is that you want to be able to run and play with the kids, then it needs to be something that's relevant to that goal. So maybe going in and just doing a bunch of bodybuilding hypertrophy, while that could be something that plays into that big why, really, you're probably looking at just more being functional right? You want to get down on the ground. You want to be able to run. You want to be able to jump. You want to be able to catch your kid as he jumps into your arms, those kind of things. So our training should reflect that specificity that you're looking for out of your lifestyle and working out. And the last thing being timely or time bound is that we really need to have a deadline. And everybody listening to this, and I know for myself, I can say we've all set a goal before and there's been an open-ended timeline. And it's mm -hmm. easy for us to say 2024 is my year and then next thing you know we blink and well okay so 2025 is my year uh i mean i oh i really meant 2026 and we just continue to put it off but if we if we cap it with some sort of realistic timeline then then we have an idea of where we're at along the journey and we can make sure that we are working towards that goal. And so setting smart goals is going to be a, a key in you having some sort of lifestyle change if you are that person that's wanting to play with your kids more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was great, dude. Uh, you know, being specific, making them measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound are all things you need to do that are going to help you just see the vision more clearly for what your goals are and what it's going to take to get there. If your goal is to lose a hundred pounds of body fat, that could be a three-year goal. It's goal. It can, it can still be smart. You know, I mm -hmm. want to lose a hundred pounds of body fat by 2026 or 2027, whatever it is, because I want to be, my kid will be seven years old by then. And I want to be able to throw the football with him, run around the yard, be active. Okay, cool. Mm. That's very specific, measurable, and is a good why. Now let's say, let's break that down year to year. Okay. A hundred pounds, three years, that's 30 pounds a year, roughly ish, a little more 33.33333333 forever. Um, that's even that's that makes it so much simpler. Now it's like I got to do that in 12 months. OK, what's that on a monthly basis? It's not that much. You know, it's maybe two or three pounds uh, a mm -hmm. month. Say, OK, what do I need to do that? We need and we just keep building off of that. And that's how you can see the, the complete vision and in, in the journey that you're going to be taking. Now, with once we have our goals set, we need to start thinking about how to build a sustainable workout routine. And this is going to be the, you know, the car that's going to gets you down the road to where your goals are. And if we're not able to drive the car, we're not going to get to the goals. So what I mean by that mm -hmm. is, and you were, Logan was just talking about this. You know, if you're, if your goal is to chase your kid around, you're not going to go start a really highly competitive Olympic weightlifting program, probably if you, especially if you've never exactly. worked out, right? So that, cause yeah. that's not going to be something that you're going to be able to do regularly, stay consistent with, mm -hmm it's probably going to beat the shit out of you. So you won't be excited about it after about a couple months of it. You know, you have, there's all of these things that need to fall in line. So we're going to run through what, what that should look like when you're building that sustainable workout program. And for me, what I'm going to start with is to stay, start small and be consistent with it. So you someone that has never done fitness before 20 minutes a day, 10,000 steps a day, like whatever your goal is, start small, start something you can do two or three times a week, hmm. be consistent at that hammer that, be successful at being 100% consistent over four weeks, 30 days, whatever it is. Cool. Now, can we go to an extra day? 
Yes. Once we add that extra day, okay, do we want to start changing what we're doing? Can we make it to the gym one time a week? Yes, we can. Okay. One time a week. Now we're enjoying the gym. Go two times a week the next month, you know, and just start increasing all that, but just stay small, start consistent. You're going to get so much further putting that 20 or 30 minutes in consistently rather than that one hour randomly, maybe once every other week. Right. What about you guys? What else, what else can you do when thinking about how to build a sustainable workout program? Yeah, I think one of the things you can think of is like, think of what you enjoy. Like maybe you don't mm. like going to the gym and lifting weights. Okay, we'll start small and start doing something that you do enjoy doing. So like for me, for instance, um, uh, I don't like running. I don't like going out on the road and just pounding pavement and going for long runs. I, I don't enjoy any any bit of it. But I love hiking. So I, I can get the same end result. Like I can get, I can increase my cardiovascular health. I can probably burn it some extra calories, but I'm doing something I enjoy rather than something that I don't enjoy. So you can think of different activities that you actually like doing because that's going to help you be more consistent with it. And then you can apply those how, however it fits into your schedule. Like, so is it realistic for me to go hiking twice a week um, for a, an hour each session? Like, yeah, that's realistic. But if I had tried to get myself to go run 20 minutes a day for five days, like I'm, I'm not going to do that because one, I don't like it. And so if I have to do it every single day, like there's no way in hell that I'm going to stick with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and there's plenty of other fitness activities. Like you can go, you can, you can bike, you can go to the gym, you can go hiking, you can uh, go swimming. Like th there's all, whatever is going to get your body moving in an enjoyable way is where you need to start with. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I, I, like on that <clears throat> same token, I love how you mentioned those hikes, like two different days a week, that would mean that if that was where you were starting from, that would mean that you have rest days already built mm -hmm. in because how many times do we see people and we I've done this myself be before I knew better, I, oh, I'm going to get in shape. And so I start working out and I work, I'm going to work out six days a week and I'm going to eat only healthy food and there's no time for life in there. There's no rest days. And we understand that the adaptations that what you're looking for out of a workout program, it doesn't actually happen while you're in the gym or while you're on that hike, it's going to happen in the recovery in the rest. And that's why our sleep is important and our nutrition is important and active rest days are important. And so making sure that whatever this consistent plan is, that it has plenty of time for rest days and rest days don't have to be you sitting on the couch, binging Netflix. It can be maybe your rest day. If you're going to the gym two or three days a week, maybe your rest day is a walk outside with the dog mm -hmm. or with the wife or with the kids, or it's one of those hikes or something of that nature. Maybe it's a 15 to 20 minute mobility routine. Maybe it's a little bit of stretching here. Stretch. It can mm -hmm. really, it can be just about anything you'd like for it to be. Just move, just go move with intent and, and, and eat good food and get good rest. And that's when you're going to really start to see the progress from the workouts, whether they're in the gym, on the mountain, whatever it might be, that's where you're going to see your progress really starting to bloom. Absolutely. And that kind of leads us right into this mindset portion of this is so many times we get in this, this headspace of we've got to go all out or nothing. And it leads to a quick burnout. Mm -hmm. So I think, as an individual who does have goals to increase their fitness and stay consistent. First thing I would think about when it comes to my mind is thinking about everything in more of a embracing progress over perfection kind of look on it. And what I mean by that is we're not going to be perfect. 80% of the time you go to the gym, you're probably not even going to want to work out. What matters is getting in there and doing the work and embracing the journey and the progress of doing everything. So, Take it easy on yourself, guys. We have so many people that, you know, think they have to do everything perfect. We all sucked at working out when we started. Everyone did. Mm -hmm. No one was good at any of this when mm -hmm. we first started. It takes practice and hours and embracing the small little wins every day. It's like, man, my my I hated deadlifting forever. Forever. And then one day I was said to myself, the only way you're gonna stop hating this is doing it more and doing it correctly and really working on the technique. And that was the thing. I sucked at it. I wasn't a good lifter and I had a, a lower back issue and stuff. And I had a fusion. And once I had my surgery, I was like, okay, this is going to be the one thing that's going to keep me out of surgery again is keeping my lower back strong. So I've got to learn how to pull from the ground. The more I just embraced the suck and focused on one or two perfect reps rather than getting that 10 every set 
all of a sudden I was at 10 reps mm-hmm. with perfect technique and it was, I love deadlifting now, you know, but it's all about just embracing yeah. that. And that it's that mindset around it, right? Like you, you, yep. you went into it with them. Yeah. You went into it with a mindset of like, you're going to practice this lift. Like mm-hmm. you're not going to get it perfect. Like you're just going to practice it. And I tell, I tell young clients that are just starting out uh, that all the time. It's like, okay, like you don't have to lift as much as I do. You don't have to lift as much as, you know, the guy in the gym next to you is you just got to practice the movement. And if you go into your, your workout with the mindset of, I'm here to practice this, not mm-hmm. per, like I'm not going to nail it and be perfect. I'm just going to practice. Man, it takes a lot of stress off. And it's usually a lot more of an, an enjoyable workout uh, when you come to it with that, that train of thought. Yeah. And you just overcome the obstacle so much easier that way. And that's, you take the pressure that, off yourself. That's and, exactly boom. it. Yeah. Yeah. What about a support system? Yeah, guys? it's, it's you... really about just... Go ahead. Sorry, Luke. Support system is no. You're good. A support system is everything, right? Like when you're trying to when you're you're trying to change your lifestyle. If this is not something that you are accustomed to, whether it's been a year or ten years or twenty years since you've consistently worked out or you've never consistently worked out, you're gonna have some accountability and have some help. And an example would be my wife started working out. 2023 was the year that she started training. She's always enjoyed running, but she's never done any kind of resistance training. And she's dabbled before. And, you know, she, I, I tried to help her. And of course, you would never listen to our significant others. And so then Doug was like, well, I'll just train her, you know? And so that worked for, you know, a week or whatever. And then she finally realized <laughs> that she can skip Doug's workouts too. And so it got to the spot where we had to, she's, she's paying for it and she goes through champion living and mm-hmm. she uh, works with Megan, but the, the support system, not only her having a coach, right? So now she has a girl that is in a position in which she would like to be in Meg is barrel racing. She's out going to pro rodeos, doing the things that Lacey would like to be able to get back to doing in the near future. So that, that accountability from somebody that's doing what you're doing is super helpful as well as the fact that Meg is educated and she knows what she's doing when it comes to training. So Lacey's not just playing with her workouts. She's not just, you know, but she's got a coach that knows what they're doing. That's writing her workouts. She doesn't have to spend any mental energy. We have four kids. She's got to think about what's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the laundry, Mm -hmm. all the things already. There's so much on her plate mentally and not to mention she's married to me. So that's like, I mean, you know, another four kids. So yeah, she's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she's able to have that. But then another aspect of her support system is she's found a gym here that offers childcare. Well, mm-hmm. that's a huge part of her, uh, of, of the, her support system because she can go and the child care watches the kids and she can go work out for the first three or four months that she worked out. She was doing it at home three days a week and it was miserable for her. She didn't enjoy it because the kids are always wanting something, needing mm-hmm. something. She could never get through a full workout. And then, and then like there's me, whereas as hard as I am to live with, I'm sure I also like realize if childcare is closed and you haven't been able to get your workout in this week and you need to go and I need to watch the kids for two hours while you drive Mm -hmm. to the gym and go work out, take your time, stop and get a coffee on the way home and come back. Like we can do that. And you have to have people in your corner that are going to support this change and that are going to help you. And they're going to sometimes hold your feet to the fire help you create there are times where Lacey's like oh, I don't think I'm gonna get my workout in today I'm like no I mean do you want to get your workout well I kind of yeah I do want to get my workout in it just doesn't look like it's working and I can say well how can we make this work what can I do to help you man that's so important in in making this not just a fad not just a thing that you do for for a month or for six weeks mm-hmm. but making it something that you do for a lifetime is having that support system around you encouraging you challenging you helping you become a better version of yourself yeah man that was nailed it on the head i couldn't say it any better myself uh it's the support systems everything honestly all of these things that we just talked about if you're someone that has fitness goals or just starting your fitness journey or getting started again uh these things that we just talked about defining your goals making them smart goals specific measurable achievable relevant time bound sticking to that plan being consistent having that support system that helps you stick to that plan. And I like Logan's example there. He's talking with his wife and, you know, she says, oh, I've been so busy. I, I'm not going to make it to the gym. And he's like, no, if, do you want to go? Yes. Okay. Well then we've, we've had this conversation. I'm your teammate. I'm going to help you. You know, you can go, I'll watch the kids. I'll take the time. Boom, done. It just makes, you've already 
that was, you know, that was the conversation y'all had. You, they, you knew the game plan going forward from there. Boom. There's no questions. There's no wondering. There's no feeling bad to ask. Like it's, it's solid. It's a great plan. Uh, last thing here is like, don't focus on perfection, focus on the progress, each step, each day of the journey, getting a little bit better. And whether that's taking 10 more steps than you did the last day or, you know, whatever, increasing your, your volume throughout your workout, all of the above, but just focus on the process, not being a perfectionist or a perfect example of exercise. It's not your job. Your job is to do exercise, to feel better and achieve your fitness goals and your life goals. Uh, but hopefully this was helpful for any of our listeners or any new listeners that are just getting started in their fitness journey. Y'all, if this was helpful, or if you know anybody that this would be helpful for, shoot them, shoot them a link to the podcast, let them take a listen, and hopefully it'll be a, a good tool and resource for them as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, we've got to thank our sponsors, Beastmaster Rodeo, been with us since day one. Uh, I, they just finished up Black Friday, so I know they have some sales coming up for Christmas as well. Check them out, BeastmasterRodeo.com. Use our discount code CHAMPIONLIVING, all one word. Caps locked, going to save you 10% on all their gear and Huey brands. You can check them out at getyourhuey.com. Our code is champion living, all one word, not case sensitive. They are the bee's knees when it comes to any apparel. Love them. Guys, until next time, we'll catch you later. <laughs>